Hey, what's up guys, it's Darkrai TV here, and I attempted a Pokemon Platinum Nuzlocke using Dragon Types only. This Nuzlocke was surprisingly hard, and it was nothing like I expected it to be, so make sure to watch the entire video to the end to see how this goes. Although Dragon Types are some of the most powerful Pokemon in Platinum, there are quite a few challenges in this run. I will have to beat over half of the gyms with just a Gibble or a Gabite, whose base stats are really not amazing. Whenever I do eventually find my next encounter, I'll have to take on the Ice-type gym, whose entire team is quite effective against my team. If I even make it that far, that is. The insanely varied list of encounters includes the following Pokemon. There's Garchomp, and Altaria. This is gonna be fun, isn't it? You guys know the rules by now, but here goes. All fainted Pokemon must be boxed. There's no leveling past the gym leader's ace, and for the Elite 4, the cap will be 59. In-game items are also not allowed. I must catch the first dragon encounter on each route, and finally, dupes claws. I'll have more on these rules in the description down below. And quickly before we start, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content. Over 91% of you watching aren't subscribed, it only takes a second but really helps out the channel. Don't forget to hit the bell button to turn on notifications too. Thank you so much, let's get into the video. After naming my rival after the worst Pokemon trainer on earth, Twig, I make my way to Rowan. Since Gibble, the first encounter, is only found after the second gym, I use the Universal Randomizer to give myself Gibble as a starter. I'm sure her Sand Veil will come in handy later on, and her serious nature is all good too. I end up naming her Wales. Can you guess what the name theme of this video will be? After this shady man hands me this free Rolex, I grab a Quick Claw and decide to take on Barry. Wales learns Dragon Rage at level 7, which is basically a guaranteed one-hit KO on most Pokemon at the early game. This allows for an easy sweep of Twig's team. This is exactly what our battle is going to look like later this week. Just wait and see. I then make my way to the first gym, where I take on Rourke's team of rock types. As this is still early on in the game, Dragon Rage should handle this team pretty easily. Kranidos manages to survive one hit, but goes for a good old potion which lets me take him out right after. And there goes Onyx too. I've never had such an easy first gym in my life. Oh if only that was the case for the next one too. After watching Rowan use his super effective dad talk against these grunts, I make my way to Valley Windworks where I take on Mars. I wonder if you can guess which move I'm gonna use. I take on Mars while doing no leveling at all, just to make sure I make it to the second gym without over leveling. And that's another easy battle in the bag. I somehow manage to sneak past every single trainer on the way to a turn of forest, and then make my way to one of the toughest battles so far. I won't even bother showing all of my 8 attempts on this gym, but here's what the winning one looked like. I basically had to either rely on Quick Claw activating against Cherim, or then Sandvale allowing me to evade an attack. I managed to easily take down Turtwig, and finally, the Quick Claw activates against Cherim, allowing for Wales to take her down unscathed. Rose Raid ends up missing her Stun Spore, which allows for Wales to easily tank her next hit and take her down with another Dragon Rage right after. Wasn't that just fun? At least this allowed Wales to finally evolve into a Gibble, which is at least something. Once again, without doing any more leveling, I take on Jupiter at the Galactic Building. Her Zubat manages to tank one hit, but after barely scratching Wales, she goes down soon after. Dragon Rage ends up doing great damage against Skontank, but lets him live on just a sliver of health. This leaves Wales at just one health while being poisoned too. She does manage to get off the next Dragon Rage, which luckily allows us to score the win. After my mom catches me like at the contest hall, I make my way to the third gym where I decide to take on Fantina. Whale starts off by going for a Dragon Rage against Duskull. I then go for the setup with Stealth Rock, followed by Sandstorm. Now, it's finally time for the takedown as I finish her off in two hits. Miss Magius ends up confusing Whales, but that's of no issue as she still hits a Dragon Rage. The setup moves did enough damage for Whales to take the KO with a second hit. Last up is Haunter, and even though she does have some decent moves, it's game over for her after a couple more hits. Good try, Fantina. I then take on my arch nemesis, Twig. I once again decide to set up with Sandstorm and Stealth Rocks, while Staravia goes with Double Team. I miss the first Dragon Rage, but the next two hits allowing me to easily take him out. Next up is Ponita. He manages to barely survive a Dragon Rage, but the next one finishes him off too. Then comes Twig's Primplop. He does some great damage here, but his speed lets him down, allowing for an easy 2-hit KO. Roselia's up next, but if the rest of the team couldn't take on Wales, neither can he. He ends up putting on a great battle, leaving Wales at just 9 HP. It's not enough though, as he goes down eventually too. Not too bad for someone named Twig. I then take on the Karate Kid, Maylene. I found the TM for Dig, so I should stand a decent chance here. 
After flinching against Meditites, I go for a Slash to lower her health, and then finish her off with a Dig. I also learn Dragon Claw here, which is amazing. Lucario outspeeds Wales, but a Stab Dig is just way too powerful, as it ends up finishing Lucario off in one hit. Dragon Claw doesn't end up being a one hit, but Machoke clearly doesn't want to give winning the light of day, and lets Wales sweep with another Dragon Claw. One of the toughest things I've had to do so far is not over level. Here I come Twig. Due to Wales' newly learned Dragon Claw, Staravia ends up being an easy 2 hit. Twig sends up Ponita next to his demise as he can't handle a single dig. Primplop actually does an amazing job at tanking Wales' digs, but after a couple back and forths, his time in this battle is over too. Roselia once again ends up being a pushover as he goes down to a crit Dragon Claw. Now for the fun part, Crash or Wake. I literally had no idea how to beat this gym with only whales, so I had to rely on and try out the good old double team toxic stall. I start the battle off with a couple of double teams, after which I go for a toxic. I then max out my evasion with double teams, and then set up with sandstorm to boost my evasion through the roof. And there goes Gyarados. Floatzel's ice fang will be deadly, so let's hope for the best here. I set up with toxic here, and then go for protect. I set up another Sandstorm to keep evasion boosted to the max, and after rinsing and repeating Protect on Sandstorm for about an hour, or two minutes, Floatzel finally goes down to toxic damage. I once again set up with Toxic against Quagsire. I start the stalling with Protect and Sandstorm. Quagsire actually manages to hit a mud shot, but it's not very effective as it only does about 20 damage. He then goes down leaving Wales with 43 HP to spare. No luck, just skill am I right? I then find Twig pretending to be a Krogunk for some reason. I wonder what's wrong with him this time. Cynthia then finally approaches me and hands me the secret potion. This is perfect, as now I'm able to catch the next encounter, a Swablu. But not without going for a refreshing bottle of Moo Moo Milk. Please sponsor me. Anyways, I end up finding the Swablu, catching him, and calling him Bhutan. His nature is also serious. What are the odds? I do some training with him, and he finally evolves into an Altaria. I guess my entire team is complete now. Cyrus then takes me on in Celestic Town, and it's safe to say he really wasn't a challenge here. Twig takes me on and tries to beat me for like the 10th time already. Just give up already. I set up with Dragon Dance against Bhutan, and after fully maxing his attack and speed, he lands the one hit with Fly. Rapidash goes down easily too, and so has the rest of his team. Empoleon actually tanks a hit, but it doesn't help much as even he goes down right after. Another day, another easy Twig battle. I then take on the 6th gym leader, Byron. I lead with Wales due to his typing, and finish off Magneton in just one hit. I go for a Fire Blast against Steelix, which does good damage, but he goes for an Ice Fang right after. It did little damage due to Steelix being burned, but this just shows me how dangerous the 7th gym will be. Wish me luck. As usual, I completely obliterate Saturn and Mars. And then there's nothing left to do but take on Candice. I gave Bhutan a Yachiberry to easily tank any hit. I then put Sneasel to sleep with Sing. I start setting up with Dragon Dance, and go for the KO with Rock Smash as soon as I can. I know I need one more Dragon Dance, so I somehow manage to put Frostlass to sleep with Sing, and then take her out using Fly. Abama Snow's typing allows for her to be an easy one hit KO too. And there goes Pulsewine too. I mean, if I manage to make it past Cyrus, at least Volkner will be an easy sweep. I then stumble upon Twig losing to Jupiter. I mean, we all saw that coming, didn't we? After listening to Cyrus perform some kind of twisted rap song, Wales finally evolves into a Garchomp. I use her to demolish Cyrus and Saturn, and then manage to free the Lake Trio. After obliterating both Mars and Jupiter, after Cyrus summons this weird shadow Pokemon, I hop into this interdimensional portal where everything seems to be flipped around. It must be opposite day here or something. I then make my way to Cyrus, and take him on for the final time. I lead with Bhutan against his Houndoom. I start setting up with Dragon Dance, while he gets a crit with Dark Pulse right away. I then start healing up with Roost, and then keep on setting up with Dragon Dance. He eventually gets another crit too. I then go for a rest to heal up, and wake up instantly with a Chesto Berry. I go for one more Dragon Dance here, and then finally take him out with a Fly. Weavile is up next, but even his speed isn't enough to stop Bhutan. Gyarados has Intimidate, but still gets taken out by a single Fly. And there goes his last two Pokemon too. Well hey, it looks like we'll at least be able to make it to the lead 4. I end up running away from Giratina, and then make my way to Sunny Shore City, where I take on the 8th and final gym leader, Volkner. As I said earlier, this should be a complete sweep. Jolteon goes down to a single Earthquake. Luxury goes down to a single Earthquake. 
Electivar goes down to a single earthquake, and guess what? Raichu goes down to a single earthquake too. After eventually making it through the victory road, I make it to the Pokemon League where I start off by embarrassing Twig. I set up with 6 Dragon Dances against the Raptor, after which I eventually take him out even after missing a fly. Heracross obviously goes down too, and so does Rapidash. Well I mean, so do Snorlax and Roserade too. Empoleon once again can't do too much, so I take him out using 2 flies. Okay, now let's see what I can do against the Elite 4 using just 2 Pokemon. Wish me luck. I make my way into the Elite 4, where I start off by taking Aaron. His team of bug type shouldn't be too much of an issue against Bhutan, but just to be safe, I set up with Dragon Dance. After repeating this another 3 times, I miss the first fly, and the second one, but the third one's the charm, and Yamega finally goes down. Even Drapion can't handle a single hit. Vespiquen also gets taken down by a single fly, and so does Heracross. Even Aaron's scissor doesn't stand a chance here, and just like that, we move on to Bertha. I lead with Wales here, and start off by going for an Earthquake. One hit isn't enough to take down Whiskash, but she ends up helping us with a Sandstorm. This allows for Sandvale to activate, but before I manage to take her out, she switches out to Gliscor to avoid the Earthquake damage. Gliscor actually does some pretty massive damage with Ice Fang, but still gets taken out by two surfs. Rhyperior can't even tank a single surf. He powed him at just the last one hit, but goes down shortly after. Golem is also an easy KO, and even with Bertha's full restore, Whiskash ends up going down too. Now, I have to take on Flint. He shouldn't be too much of a challenge due to Wales's typing. Houndoom goes down to a single earthquake, and so does Magmortar. Rapidash also is an easy one hit KO. But I mean, so is the rest of his team, as each member falls to a single earthquake. And now for the final battle before the champion, Lucian. I once again choose to lead with Wales due to her having the move crunch. Both Mr. Mime and Espeon go down to a single hit. Bronzong's high defense and typing allows it to tank quite a few hits, but even it can't pose much of a threat. Alakazam also goes down to a single crunch. Earthquake doesn't end up finishing a late off, but leaves Wales sitting at just 2 HP. It's not enough to finish Wales off though, and just like that, the battle is over. Now, I finally decide to take on Cynthia. Before watching the battle, can you guess who I'm going to lead with? Let me know if you got it right or not in the comments down below. I lead with Bhutan against Spiritomb, and start off by setting up with Dragon Dance. After going for 3 consecutive Dragon Dances, I heal up with Roost and then keep on going. She ends up getting a crit with Dark Pulse, but Bhutan has come prepared and heals up right away with a couple of Roosts. I make sure to be fully buffed up before finally taking out Spiritomb with a Dragon Claw. Garchomp also easily falls to a single super effective Dragon Claw. I go for a Fly against Lucario, which also ends up being a 1 hit. Jeez this sweep is looking crazy. Milotic ends up falling to a Dragon Claw, and so does Roserade. Even Togekiss ends up being a 1 hit KO. Even with a 2 member team, I think this has to be the easiest Cynthia sweep I've ever done. I bet none of you expected me to lead with Bhutan either. This Nuzlocke was a lot of fun doing, and I also gained a lot of respect for Altaria and how good he actually is. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you made it this far into the video, and leave a comment on what you want to see me do next. I'll see you guys later on in this week, but make sure to turn on notifications because I have a very special video planned out for this weekend. Peace out.